Welcome to the Mortgage Mum podcast with me, Sarah Tucker, founder of The Mortgage Mum, where we believe mortgages are about more than just money. Join us every week where we will share with you bite-sized tips, interviews with inspiring people inside and outside of our industry, and tools to help you achieve balance in every area of your life. And a very warm welcome to today's episode of the Mortgage Mum podcast, where we are talking all about the 95% loan to value mortgages on the new mortgage guarantee scheme from the government. And this is something I touched upon in an episode a little while ago, but now the lenders are lending and we are seeing the results of this. So I thought it would be a good time to touch base on it again in a little bit more detail and just explain to you exactly what it means. Um, to get a mortgage with 95% loan to value and what the difference is between the mortgage guarantee scheme, 95% loan to value mortgages and the normal high street. Um, So grab yourself a cuppa as always and listen in and hopefully you'll learn something new. Okay, so 95% mortgages, what does this even mean? Well, the good news is it's quite simple. Um, It means that you can buy a property or move home with a 5% deposit. This is not the help to buy scheme. This is a new scheme launched by the government in April 2021. And it is a new mortgage guarantee scheme. And in the government's own words, this scheme is to support a new generation in realising the dream of home ownership. However, it is not just available to first-time buyers. Really important. So this is for homeowners and first-time buyers in the UK. But it is to help those of you who only have a 5% deposit to either get on the property ladder or potentially move home if you're already on the property ladder but don't have more of a deposit available than 5%. And I'm a huge fan. I'm really happy with the government for doing this and yeah it's seen it's already since April seen a huge shift in the market in that area when COVID-19 hit so as I record this we're in May 2021 when COVID hit 95% just disappeared overnight Um, We had a lovely period of time where we had 95% mortgages, we had help to buy mortgages and we had 90% load to value. And obviously beyond that, 85%, 80%. But people could buy properties with a 5% deposit. So we had all of you lovely first time buyers saving your money, looking at properties, thinking I'm nearly there. And then they just disappeared. And it was so hard to continue to tell clients they're not offering 5% deposits at the moment unless it's helped to buy. They're not offering 5% deposits at the moment, sorry. And sure, it doesn't sound that much different, 5%, 10%. But when you're the one saving every penny, 5% is a lot more money to try and save. And is a lot more time not moving into your own property or not moving out of a property that you no longer like it and want to live in. So it was a big deal. And here at The Mortgage Mum, I took it badly for you guys. I thought I could sense the disappointment all around. And obviously we were living in a time of such fear anyway, but it was the disappointment that struck me. So we did start a mailing list just to give a little bit of hope. And I had full faith that something would happen. But um, yeah, sure enough, in April 2021, it did. And the government launched the mortgage guarantee scheme. And actually, before April, um, a few high street lenders, once they knew the mortgage guarantee scheme was coming up, they actually started releasing 95% loan to value rates. So right now, there are lenders outside of the scheme lending 95% and there's also those that are in the scheme. So the lenders who are in the scheme, because we're going to be talking about that mainly today, is Santander, as of today's date, Santander, HSBC, Barclays, Lloyds, NatWest and Virgin. And um, 
they've all got completely different criteria <laughs> just to make life really easy. So um, I'm not going to go into loads of detail about every single bank's criteria because I want this episode to be really easy to digest. But what I will say is they are all having different rules. So one lender, for example, Santander, have made the decision that they're not going to lend to self-employed applicants for this scheme. Another lender will lend to self-employed applicants on the scheme. So there's a big difference between each one. So if you are thinking about avoiding a broker and going directly, I would I would just say make sure you're understanding that every single bank has a different rule. And although the government have issued the guarantee, they are allowed to do do with that as they see fit and as they feel comfortable with. So ideally, I would use a broker because they know the difference between them. But there are also other lenders on the market at 95% known to value that are not part of the scheme. And it's important I let you know that as well. So one of the questions, and I've been sent so many questions on this topic, so I'm going to make sure I cover them all. But one of the big ones that I've got asked is what's the difference between the help to buy scheme and the mortgage guarantee scheme? And it's a really good question. The help to buy scheme um, was also a government incentive, and it's actually helped over 100,000 households get on the property ladder, which is just incredible. Um, So it's a great scheme, but it's only available for new build properties. Now that has continued. Um, It's it's changed in 2021 um, to 2023. It has changed. It used to be available for homeowners as well, but now it's only for first time buyers. But the main difference between the help to buy scheme and the mortgage guarantee scheme is Yes, you can buy a property with 5% deposit. You have to be a first-time buyer and it has to be a new build property. The difference here is the government support you by giving you 20% extra deposit that's interest-free for five years. And that's how they help you. With the mortgage guarantee scheme, they're helping you in the background by giving the lender a guarantee, which means that the lender's more happy to lend you the money. Um, You don't really need to know the ins and outs of how that works. But essentially, if for whatever reason, you don't pay your mortgage, and that's called defaulting on your mortgage, and your lender has to sadly get your property to repay the debt back, the government are basically saying that they will back some of that. So that they will bear some of the loss so that the mortgage lender is more willing to take the risk. So they're essentially taking some of that risk away from the lender. So the the benefit to you isn't as obvious, but it is still there because without it, that lender probably wouldn't give you that mortgage with a 5% deposit. So that's the major difference. The other thing is the mortgage guarantee scheme doesn't have to be on a new build property and it's also available to homeowners. So that's the big difference. New build, first time buyer, possibly help to buy is your answer. Not new build, not first time buyer or first time buyer, but not a new build is going to be the mortgage guarantee scheme or perhaps not either scheme if you find a lender that's happy to do it anyway. That's where a broker comes in. So why has the government launched the scheme? Well, we talked about that earlier. They really want to help. And I have to say, I think they've done brilliantly in helping in all sorts of ways. Obviously, the stamp duty holiday is coming to an end very soon, as I record this. But that has really boosted the economy in the market. And this is another boost, another sign from the government. And actually, since 2010, with the government schemes in property, help to buy and right to buy, there's actually 681,000 households that have been positively affected. So I have massive respect and gratitude for the government for what they do to support our industry. And this is just another great positive sign from them. Now, what is the information you need to know on this? Um, Rates wise, I don't like to talk about specific rates because they change all the time. What I will say is the rates get higher, the lower your deposit is just generally, because you have to think about it from a lender's point of view the risk is greater. So they charge you more because the risk is greater. Um, So the rates are likely to be higher, obviously, than if you had a bigger deposit. And lots of people are saying to me, 
you know, should I just get a bigger deposit? Should I just wait? Um, And that's a real personal decision, which requires a personal conversation with you. It really depends. Why do you want to move out now? Can you afford the monthly repayments with 5%? How long will it take you to get the other 5%? And what does waiting mean to you? Obviously, the bigger the deposit, the better. But it's about what it is in your life. Does waiting impact your life greater than saving money on a rate and getting a better deal? And these are the sorts of conversations we would have with you to make sure that you're making the right decision for you. So um, the answer isn't a straightforward, yes, save for a bigger deposit. Um, It really depends. But have a chat with us and we'll help you find that answer if you're not immediately clear. Now, um, another question that I've been asked is, can I use the new 95% mortgage guarantee and take advantage of the stamp duty holiday at the same time? The answer is yes, absolutely. However, as I record this, we're in the middle of May. And by the time it goes out, it will be the end of May. And really, I think you've missed the boat for the big stamp duty saving by then, which ends at the end of June. But you may still be eligible for the slight saving. So there's a saving of stamp duty till the end of September, properties up to 250000 So you may still be eligible for that. But um, any more than that, then that is ending. And the conveyances, the solicitors are working really hard just to keep on top of the sales they've got going through already. So I'll be honest, I don't think you're going to get it through quickly at the moment. So you probably missed the boat on the main one if you haven't already. Um, Now, another question I've been asked is, will house prices go up or down? And what are the advantages and the risks and the disadvantages, which I totally understand why people ask me that question all the time. Um, It's I don't have a crystal ball. I have lots of crystals, but not a crystal ball. So I don't know if is the honest answer. What do I think? I think the stamp duty holiday has probably helped the market. I think lots of people have been buying um, that perhaps wouldn't have been buying if it wasn't for the stamp duty holiday. And I think that has created a busier market and that has pushed house prices up um, because demand. Demand will always demand will always give you the price of something. If something's in high demand, then the price will go up. My dad is an estate agent um, and he said he's getting probably an average of eight or nine offers for every property that he sells at the moment, which is incredible, incredible um, amount of interest. So it's a very competitive space right now. Do I think this will continue when the stamp duty holiday ends? Well, we're already seeing signs of it slowing a little bit, but not loads. And um, I think it's naturally going to slow down a bit because, you know, there's going to be some people that can't afford to move anymore without that saving. But I don't, I personally think it's going to stay busy. Um, I think lockdown has really taught us how important our homes are. Lots of people are renovating and want to release equity for home improvements. Lots of people are building offices in their gardens. Lots of people like working from home and want to spend more time in their homes. And so homes have become really important, um, even more so than they were before. So I do think that is a long-term result of COVID. And I do think um, house prices may level out a bit, but I I'm very positive and I think it will continue as it is. But these could be famous last words, of course. Um, The risk of the mortgage guarantee scheme, there's no real great risk to you other than making sure you can afford that mortgage. But it's our job to make sure that you can um, and the lenders and their income multiples are not extremely high for the 95% guarantee schemes. They're, They're ranging, but they're about four and a half times your income. Um, on a basic level. So I think just making sure you can afford the mortgage is our job. But really outside of that, um, I guess the risk is just, you know, ensuring your own personal situation is ready to take on a commitment because it is a big commitment. Um, But other than that, I don't really see any risks to you. And with the help to buy a scheme, it's a bit different. It's important that you understand that if the property price goes up, 
so does the amount you owe. So if, if you do borrow that 20% interest free, it's going to be 20% of whatever the value of the property is when you pay it back. So that is a risk with that, that you could end up paying more back than what you would have paid if you had the cash initially. Um, now, I think I'm going to touch on the other alternatives to the mortgage guarantee scheme, because if you are somebody that's looking to get on the property ladder, it's important that you understand there's lots of options for you. So you've got the mortgage guarantee scheme that we've spoke about today, which is paying a 5% deposit. Um, we know that there are six banks out there they're going to lend you a five-year fixed rate. That is one of the restrictions you have to lend for a long period of time. Second homes and buy-to-let properties are not allowed. Um, it's available to first-time buyers and homeowners in the UK. It has to be repayment mortgage. It cannot be interest only. And the property has to be purchased at £600,000 or less. That's the mortgage guarantee scheme. The Help to Buy Equity Loan Scheme, um, the new scheme launched in April 2021 till March 2023. And that, as I said earlier, gives you the ability to borrow 20% interest free to add to your deposit. You can put more than 5% deposit down and get help to buy. And in London, you can borrow more than 20% and get up to 40%. The amount is different. It's different for every single area. So it used to be capped at £600,000. So it used to be quite similar to this new guarantee scheme. Now it depends where you live, depends on the cap. And they range quite a lot. So I would advise you to go onto the government website and just check out the different um, rate categories. And I've got a whole episode on help to buy the new scheme um, in the Mortgage Mum podcast. So I just recommend if you were keen to find out more about that, to listen into that. Likewise, I've also got an episode on shared ownership. Shared ownership is as it sounds. You buy a portion of the property and you rent the other half or the other bit of the portion that you're not buying. Essentially, if you've got a low deposit and low affordability, it can be a really good way of getting on the property ladder and working your way up to owning an entire property of your own. Um, it's very affordable and it's a lot better. And I know lots of people that have used it. Again, there's a whole episode on that on the Mortgage One podcast that I would recommend you listen to if you're interested. Um, but there's also family assist schemes and um, guarantor mortgages. So these are where your family or the bank of mum and dad can help. And I'm going to be doing a whole episode on these soon because I think it's really important. Lots of parents come to me and say, how can I help my kids? And there's so many ways. It's not just about giving them the deposit. You can boost your children's affordability by being on their mortgage. You don't have to be on the deeds of the property. You can just be on the mortgage to help boost the affordability you can also put money into a special savings account which will act as their deposit um with barclays family springboard and you'll get the money back plus interest um your, your children can get on the property ladder using that as a deposit and you get your money back so it's not all about just gifting them the deposit there's lots of other ways and lots of other schemes that you can do but they vary from lender to lender so um, there are things out there for you guys, and I feel really positive that there's lots of options. Um, so I hope today's episode has given you some information, but most importantly, I hope it's inspired you and made you realise, oh, there's actually more options than I thought. And if you're saving and you've got 3% or even just one pound saved, just keep going and keep your vision really, really clear as to why you're saving and what you're doing this for. Lots of us can look for the short term benefits of spending money, especially after lockdown. We've been locked in, you know, lots of people want to spend. Um, but just remember, every penny and pound you save is getting you closer to you putting the key in the door of your own home. And there is no feeling quite like it. Um, now, I really want to just make sure if you got if you are a first time buyer that you're remembering that you can also benefit from the lifetime ISA. Now, this is a long term savings product and it's intended to support younger people saving for their first home or for later life. So from the 6th of April 2017, adults under 40 have been able to open a lifetime ISA and save up to £4,000 each year until they reach 50 and you'll get 25% government bonus on your savings. And those funds can be used to purchase a first home 12 months after opening a lifetime ISA. So that's really important. 
And if you're a first-time buyer who already held a help to buy ISA, because they don't exist now, you can continue to save into those accounts until November 2029. And you've got up till December 2030 to claim up to a maximum of £3,000 government bonus towards the purchase of your first home. So although you can't get them anymore, if you have still got money in them, you can hold it and continue to save in there. So that's just worth me pointing out at the end of this episode in case anyone wasn't aware of those two points. Um, Thank you so much for listening. You know I'm passionate about helping people, particularly with a 5% deposit, because I know how in despair you were last year. So if you just want to chat about it, just get in touch. We are more than happy to help you. And yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to help you move or get on the property ladder. So keep positive. Let us know your hopes and your dreams, because the more you tell us, the more invested we are in you. And we can't wait to help you soon. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening to the Mortgage Mum podcast and I hope you learned something new today and felt inspired in some way. Here at the Mortgage Mum we really believe in people supporting people so if you've enjoyed this episode of the Mortgage Mum podcast please share and subscribe and rate and review this podcast and let's keep supporting each other. And of course if you would like help with your mortgage or your insurance, head over to www.themortgagemum.co.uk or contact any one of the team on social media. We would love to help you. Thank you for listening.